Wesley Skiles, known as Wes, was born in 1958 and grew up in Florida. He started diving when he was quite young. He took to water quite like a fish. When Wes was a kid, his mom encouraged him to take a class at the YMCA. Wes picked an introduction to diving class, basically learning how to snorkel. He had to wait a year before he was old enough to take the next class, in which he would add an air tank to his mask and fins. He got certified to dive when he was just 13. Diving also began to motivate Wes in school. Divers have to use math to figure out depths and air levels, among other things, so math began to make sense to Wes. A classmate even recalled the incident that sparked Wes's interest in cave diving. During one school year, the Fossil Club took a field trip to Ginny Springs. Wes watched several divers emerge from the spring's caves and excitedly asked them questions about their hobby. On the ride back to Jacksonville, Florida, he kept saying, that is what I want to do. In addition, both Wes and his brother Jim were into photography from an early age. They were surfers and created films of themselves surfing. Wes's grandfather gave him his first camera. In high school, Wes Skiles began working at Jacksonville dive shops. At 16, he became certified as a cave diver, which became his specialty, and he eventually went with world-renowned cave diver Shaq Exley to retrieve the bodies of two explorers who drowned in Royal Springs in Suwannee County, Florida. When most of his friends began heading off to college, Wes began his world adventures, making the first trip to Haiti. When Wes was in his late teens, he was working at a resort in Haiti, teaching tourists how to scuba dive. Jim Skiles said that his brother was always willing to go on an adventure, even if he didn't know what was around the bend. He was willing to take reasonable risks. In 1980, Wes met his wife Terry when she was working a part-time job at a store and sold him a camera. They were married in 1981 and had two children, Nathan and Tessa. In 1985, Wes founded Cars Productions and continued his underwater film career. He was a supporter of cave divers using their skills to assist with scientific diving projects. On a 1988 trip to Australia's Panikin Plains Cave, Wes and a team of others, including Andrew and Liz White, were exploring a cave when the surface above encountered a storm that dumped a reported two years' worth of rain in 20 minutes. 300 million liters of water flowed into the cave, collapsing part of the entrance and trapping most of the team below. Wes survived the near-death experience and filmed his own escape from the cave. For Wes, it was all about the love of adventure. He had this childlike enthusiasm to explore and share what he found with others. Lighting underwater cave systems became a specialty for Wes, and he was described as probably the best in the world at it. He designed some of the very early lights used in cave videos. It was July 21, 2010, while on a dive off Boynton Beach, Florida, Wes was working with a crew photographing bull sharks. He had been down in southern Florida taking shots for a National Geographic television special he'd been contracted to shoot, titled Speed Kills. He signaled to the other divers that he was ascending because his camera was out of memory. His body was found on the bottom of the reef shortly after that. Attempts to revive him were unsuccessful and he was pronounced dead at a local hospital. It was baffling to Wes Skiles' family that, after 40 years of diving, he drowned in about 70 feet of water three miles off the coast of Boynton Beach. His brother at first thought Wes might have had a heart attack or equipment malfunction. The autopsy, toxicology report, and equipment checks showed nothing abnormal. He had only been on some prescription medication. The official autopsy concluded that it was an accidental drowning. 
Wes had taken his son Nathan on one of his last adventures to photograph the blue holes of the Bahamas, including the deepest known underwater cave in the world. Wes is shot of two divers making their way through the eerie blue waters of the Cascade Room appeared on National Geographic's cover. One of the divers is Nathan. In the past 15 years before his death, Wes produced and directed more than a dozen films, including an IMAX film, Journey into Amazing Caves. Wes had worked at a dive store in Branford, Florida, named Branford Dive Center. He and fellow cave instructor Jean Broom had laid safety line for many of the underwater spring caves in Florida. Through his cave diving experience, Wes noticed pollution, algae blooms, and problems with water levels. He started giving presentations at schools in the late 1980s. He was said to be a great communicator. Wes used his photos as proof that there were issues with the water. He was one of the first people to recognize problems with the springs. To prove what he was talking about, he started taking pictures, his wife said. Wes started taking water samples and talking to state officials about pollution in the 1980s. He used his skills as a diver to advance aquatic research. Wes had drawn maps of the Florida Aquifer, the network of underground waterways running beneath the state. Wes conducted film projects for many groups such as the National Geographic Society. The National Geographic Antarctica expedition allowed him to be the first human to set foot on the iceberg B-15. His expedition to record deep water sharks had him diving to a depth of 700 feet for 11 hours in a newt suit. Wes created, directed, and was the cinematographer of the PBS series Water's Journey. The project was an effort by Wes to increase public awareness of their groundwater and the hydrogeological cycle. In 2004, Wes was awarded the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Suncoast Regional Emmy Award for his work on the Water's Journey series. Wes was posthumously awarded National Geographic's Explorer of the Year Award, jointly with his longtime colleague and friend, Kenny Broad. In 2016, Wes's widow, Terry, filed a lawsuit against the company Lamartech Inc., also known as DiveRight, which produced the underwater breathing apparatus her husband was using when he died, claiming that the equipment malfunctioned, causing his death even though he was inexperienced on the rebreather he was using and ignored safety features that were functioning properly. Unlike regular scuba devices that vent exhaled gas into the water, a rebreather includes a counter lung that cleans expelled air, allowing a diver to rebreathe it. Terry claimed that a design defect in the Dive Right O2 Optima FX closed circuit rebreather that Wes had borrowed to use on the dive caused the rebreather to malfunction and stop delivering oxygen, causing him to lose consciousness and drown. Terry sought $25 million in damages from the firm. Wes had high blood pressure and celiac disease, Terry said. He suffered from chronic joint pain caused by surfacing too quickly in five of the around 7,000 dives he made throughout his career. He was taking a narcotic painkiller, hydrocodone, and a sleep aid, Ambien. The company's defense claimed that Wes Giles was impaired by the drugs, causing him to make what proved to be fatal mistakes. The defense claimed Wes wasn't certified to use Dive Right's rebreather. It was then pointed out that Wes had been certified on similar devices produced by other companies. Lamartech countered, that there was no evidence of either a defect or a malfunction of the rebreather, and it thoroughly tested its products. An attorney told the jury, Wes lost consciousness during an ascent from 83 feet. He lost his mouthpiece and drowned. Lamartech Inc. was cleared of all charges on May 20, 2016, by a Palm Beach County jury.